So the whole text contains many suktas. The word sukta indicates su ukta. Ukta means utterance. Su ukta means a perfect utterance. That is to say that it contains the sound key, the syllable key, and the number key, which gives us the method of how to utter. And when uttered, it gives us something about the utterance of the Lord Almighty into ourselves. That is exactly the meaning is a perfect utterance. The word utterance is used in a double sense. Ourselves uttering the mantra or ah, the consciousness of the mantra uttering through us. It is defined like that. Every mantra, every sutta, sorry, every sutta has many standards called shlokas. There may be 10 or 15 or 20 or sometimes 5 or 6 or 7. Here, in the lesson we are going to take up today, there are 24 slokas. This number is significant. It has everything to do with the content of the text and the import of the text. Now, we are going to take up a sukta, which is called the sukta of the person, the purusha sukta. Purusha means person, the perfect appearance of the person. It has everything to do with the creation in two halves. One is the cosmogenesis and the other is anthropogenesis. That is the creation of the cosmos and the creation of the individual. The human being taken into consideration. So, they deal with them. A person called the cosmic personality or cosmic consciousness and a person called the individual personality. And hence it is called Purusha Sutra. It gives us also a key to understand the relationship between the solar year and the birth of the frame of an individual. Hence, it teaches something about the ear. Therefore, it has the number of lunations in the ear. That is, 12 new moons and 12 full moons after the Gayatri meter. So in every sutta you take, the number is highly significant. It is always in accordance with the import of the sutta, or the topic dealt with in the sutta. 
this sutta contains 24 shlokas, which are also called 24 mantras. So every sutta contains many shlokas or mantras. The total text is called Samhita. The word, that means the original collection. There are four Samhitas, the Red Veda, the Ayur Veda, the Sama Veda and the Asura Veda. And each collection contains many suktas. Each sukta is a lesson of some cogent topic, subject. And each sukta contains many shrokas or mantras. And each mantra is composed of, composed in a particular meter. That is Chandas, which we spoke of yesterday and day before. Once again, the Chandas will be in accordance with the, the subject mentioned in the mantra. So whenever we speak of a Vedic hymn or mantra, we are expected to know the chandas of the mantram, that is the meter in which it is composed. That is the Gayatri or a, something else. And the, the Rishi who has composed it, that is the Ah. And the Deva about whom it speaks and the Deva invoked by that particular hymn. These three things are given to understand about every mantra in the Vedic text. Here, by Deva, it is Strongly understood as a God. It is foolish. There cannot be a God. There is only the God. <laughs> because there cannot be two Gods. I told you God is a jealous God. He cannot admit a second existence. And Sometimes it is also wrongly understood as an angel or a thing. But the thing is different. Here, Deva means the subject of that particular sentence. That is what is meant. When I say Rudolf, who is the Deva of that name? You have to find out the person. If I say duster, the Deva is this. It means that by Deva it doesn't mean anything very peculiar. It is a terminology which we are expected to know at first. Deva means the existence of that particular word or sentence upon whom the existence of the whole passage stands. Just as you are the Deva of your body. That's the reason why the tissues in your body, the matter, the respiration, the heart beat, all these things are kept cogent because you are there inside. In that sense, the word Deva is used and defined in the Vedic commentaries and the texts. So, with these few right conceptions 
and having removed the wrong conceptions about these words, now we try to take up one soup. The present one is called Purusha Sukta. It has 24 stanzas or uh, mantras, you know. As I told you, the word Purusha means person. Etymologically, the two words are of the same origin. Purusha and person. The exterior differs from language to language. Just as we have a type of dress, we will have a type of dress. Suppose when I come to Geneva, I will have lower type of dress, but the person is the same. Similarly, etymologically, the two words Purusha and Parsan are the same. So it is a Sukta which deals with the person. It is composed of mantras of a meter which has eight syllables in each line. If there are three lines, you call it Gayatri. Now here there are four lines. This is another meter or chambers. Each mantra contains 32 syllables in all. And for your information, this meter is called Anushtu. It is a meter, name of a meter. Stuk means praise. To praise the praise and speak the greatness of someone. That is what it means. And Anu means echo. To echo. So this meter indicates something that is echoed in the living beings, that is being expressed as the echo of some original through the living beings. Whenever such a thing is indicated as the import of the mantra, this meter is used. For example, the Mahabharata in Sanskrit is all composed in this meter. The Ramayana of Valmiki is composed in this meter. It is one of the most popularly used meters in Sanskrit. We can say that the classical Sanskrit literature contains the maximum number of poems or hymns composed in this meter. <coughs> Before entering into the text, <coughs> just one more point of interest. Every lesson, every hymn is called a sukta. So I will give you some more examples of the names before we enter into this. There is what is called Sri Sukta. Another thing. Sri means that which is dependent upon. That which depends upon something is called Sri. If you call this a person, you can call this the everything of that person. The body, the mind, the intelligence, the splendor, the light, the sound, whatever the person has is called 
Sri, whatever is, is God's person. So, you are expected to know that whatever you have is not yourself. Whatever you are is the real I am in you. That's why these two are learned together one after the other. They are in fact considered as the couple suktas. They are the young couple you see in the Vedic hymns. So this is the young boy and this is the young girl. This is called Purusha and this is called Prakriti of his nature. So there is one lesson for the I am in you. There is one lesson for the I have of you. Whatever you can say I have, this is mine, this is my hand, this is my body, this is my skin, this is my bone, this is my head, this is my nose, this is my eye, this is my ear. All that is called your prakriti or your nature or your Sri, that is that which depends upon you for its existence. Yeah. Pardon? And so prakriti, 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 this is purusha. If Two books together is called the unit existence. The unit existence which is double in its nature. <laughs> we are double in existence. We are what we are and we are what we have. Without the one, the other cannot exist. Even the wise belongs to what you have and not what you are. So, in the Tantras also you will find that the Lord is double in his existence. That is half male and half female. That means the passive half and the active half. Are you not able to follow my intonation? But I think that's the difficulty about the intonation of one person belonging to one country and another person belonging to another country. Sometimes I try to be slow also. And about the definition of these two fellows also, there are many stories and allegories that speak or explain or define these two things. For example, they are called the father and the mother of creation because we exist because of them. The I am in you and the I have in you, they are called the father and mother in its real sense. Different from the biological father and the biological mother who in their time are made up of only these two. So these are wonderful concepts. And in one short story it is said that the father and mother are sitting on the peak of the mountain and speaking. There are nobody there. Only the couple was sitting. And the father smiled at the mother and said, You see, some people meditate upon me and come to me. Some people meditate upon you and come to you. See how fine he says. That means, among the living beings of this earth, some people are conscious about the I am, the subjective conscious. And some people are conscious about the you are or the objective universe around. And he says, both means the same worship and both reach the same goal, he says. 
Like this, we have many wonderful stories in the Vera and in the Tantras also, which are unfortunately misinterpreted and misrepresented. Now we have de deviated too much. But we have to know the nature of the literature. So you have what is called Vishnu Sukta, another Sukta you find in the Rigveda, Vishnu Sukta. The word Vishnu means pervasion. 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 background lot has another name. The lot who feeds has another name. The lot, the same lot who works as personality has another name. The same lot who forms the female counterpart. You have another name called the Rudra Sukta. It means the Lord who vibrates, the drums. Because all the sound is the symbol of the trill that takes place between the vocal cords, as I told you. The trill is also called the Rigveda, which produces the voice. So, this hymn speaks of Rudra as the Lord, as the Deva of this mantra. Also we have Suparna Sukha. That is the lesson of the winged bird the bird with beautiful wings. Here the bird is described. And the bird is coming into our house and going out. Very frequently it is described. That is what we call the exhalation and the inhalation. That is the bird of respiration. Like this. Everywhere it is called a sukta. So you have Agni Sukta, that is hymns to the fire, a lesson about the fire, a few stanzas from this are taken and commented upon in what we know as the treatise on cosmic fire, you will find the translation of those standards also at the end of the book. They are called the archaic standards. Agni, so we go into the Purusha Sutta and see what there is in it. The text comes like this. You may take down some of you, or you may just listen or try to understand. You will be left to your choice. This is the first line of the mantra. Sahasra, Sirsha, Purushaha. Sahasra Akshan, Sahasra Pa. The third line. Sakomu, Vishwato. Varatva, the word claim, Atyatishtha, Atyatishtha, Dashangulam. This is the original text of the first mantra of Purusha Sahasra, Sirsha, Purusha, Sahasra, Sirsha. 
सहस्राक्ष सहस्रपूमि विश्व अत्यतिष्ठ दशांगुण अकॉर्डिंग टू Sanskrit syllable division, we will have eight syllables in each line. Sa is one syllable, ha second syllable, sra third syllable, ram, sir one syllable, sha one syllable, piyu. One syllable. R U. One syllable. S H E. One syllable. That's all. This is what is called. It's not a syllable. It is called the H, the consonantal ending, the last one. There is no vowel in it in pronunciation. So there are eight syllables. It is only for your information. For the present, it is not important. We are going to the sixth key of the six keys we have discussed yesterday. That is called the etymological key. Otherwise, it will be a hard one. Now, I will give you the word meaning first in English, preferably in the prose order of the sentence. See, this is this comes first. Purusha. That means the person. We take the word meaning in English. In prosa, this comes first. <coughs> so we take the meaning purusha. That means the person. Here, throughout this hymn, person means many persons. First, the cosmic person who is the content of this space and world, and then the solar person who is the personality of one unit solar system. and then a planetary person who is the lord of that particular planetary body that means the planetary consciousness of a planet just as the present planetary consciousness of our earth is rudolf in geneva because he is ips <laughs> every planetary globe or body has <laughs> its own planetary person just as every physical body has its own person living in it they dwell in in every individual there is a person and that person is also indicated and in every atom there is a permanent atom that is making the atom evolve which we call the ego and that is the person of that atom in this him all those persons are indicated whenever the word is used because they are not so many persons they are only one person when you see the sky through the window and again when you see the sky through the top when you see the sky through the hole it is only the same sky there are no so many skies Like that, there is only one person, 
and it is only to make us visualize this oneness this hum is given to us so whenever we say person in this lesson you understand that it is the same person who pervades all these persons that's why in the commentary it is said that this him is dedicated to the one who reads and understands it because he is the person about whom this him is speaking is a peculiar obligation is it so you find the caption dedicated to the reader and if you question the author about whom this book is written the answer is about the reader so we have to remember this before we try to understand otherwise the meaning will be broken so it is dedicated to the reader and the import of the lesson is the reader himself so humorously you know one commentator remarks about this that one who does not read this will miss a chance of having a book written about him <laughs> Of course, it is a fun, but it is to some extent true <laughs> because this hymn has many, many commentaries in French, in Sanskrit, and one of the commentators remarks that the one who does not read and understand this will miss a beautiful chance of having a book written about him. Of course, in his own way, he is correct, but he is humorous. Just he remarks like that. Purusha hadi parsan sahasra a thousand. Sahasra means a thousand. Sirsha means head. Head. Okay. so the statement is the person is having thousands of heads that means first remove the idea that you have a head and he has a head and replace it with an idea that the one person is having two heads three heads four heads so many bodies that is the first proposition so if you have everybody having a person inside you present poor fellow here there is a person in whom the bodies are floating like the many bottles thrown in a river there is river within the bottles and there is the river outside the bottles the bottles are floating in the river river is flowing in the bottles like that we have to understand here yeah. so the purusha is sahasra sirsha thousand headed he has thousands of heads and sahasra once again thousand aksha means eyes he has thousands of eyes Sahasra means thousand. Aksha means eyes, having eyes. Again, Sahasra, a thousand. Path means feet. Feet. Thousands of feet. Here is a wonderful fellow personality <laughs> who has thousands of heads, thousands of eyes, and thousands of. 
the poor fellow does not know the simple arithmetic calculation because if a person has thousand heads, he should have two thousand eyes. <laughs> but this fellow has only thousand heads, thousand eyes, thousand feet. So he doesn't know the fundamentals of arithmetic. <coughs> this means the one person, a cosmic has the many thousands of eyes being created from within himself, existing on his own background and merging into his background again. So, once again, Sahasra means thousand, Sirsha means head, head, Purusha means person, Sahasra Aksha means thousand eyed. Sahasra Pahapa, thousand feet, having thousand feet. Then, if you separate this, this becomes dramatically, that is, the consonant of H will be there in the end, if you separate the word. It is dramatical. It means he. He means Purusha. Here is one sentence, now the second sentence is talking. He, the Purusha, Bhumim, Bhumi means the earth globe. The earth globe is called Bhumi. Because it belongs to who or material plane it produces. Vishyato. When separated, it becomes here, just like here, the ending becomes Vishwata. The consonantal ending H will be there whenever you split up two words. Vishwata. That means in all directions. In all directions. Vishwata means. And also from all directions. Vishwatana means in all directions and from all directions. The next word, Pratva. Pratva means having surrounded. Having surrounded, Pratva means. The further that gives you these two words first. Dasha. So the next word, to be taken is Dasha. Dasha means ten. The number ten. Dasha means ten. You have Desama. Desa, Eka, Dasha are all etymologically the same. You see, Dasha means ten. Angula. The next one word is angula. Dasha plus angula. So you have to split it like this, angula. 